Super Tuesday, Digital Charcuterie. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. Because I never say that, so I gotta get it said right out of the gate. Like, subscribe, turn on the bell for notifications. This is Digital Charcuterie. I'm James. Joining me today, as always, on the Tuesday is Steve and Scotty. Thanks, guys, for joining me. Hello, hello. What's going on, man? Yeah, we're gonna have a lot of fun. Pleasure. A lot of a lot of superhero stuff has happened in the last. It feels like the last time we did a video on a Tuesday, it's been a year and a half with the amount of superhero stuff that's kind of, <laughs> kind of happened. And superhero stuff, I mean Batman stuff more than anything, because it's been a week long Batman parade going on. You guys have both had it, Scotty. We've talked about it on the channel, Steve. You've had a chance to see the Batman since we last spoke. Finally saw it on Saturday. Yeah. Way behind you. Finally guys. saw it. That's that's fine. You know the week. It was a huge weekend. It actually had a bigger Sunday than they anticipated. The Sunday for the Batman was massive. It ended up. I think it finished the weekend at like 138 million domestically. That's a massive amount amount for uh, pandemic yeah. era. That's huge. Heck yeah, dude. I was so yeah. happy when I saw the global and everything. I was like. Like, yeah, let's a, go. Let's a do. A lot it. of people I know are very hyped. There's some criticism out there, but overall, even the people who are criticizing, still hyped up here. Yeah. So we're gonna talk. I think we're gonna get into that criticism just a little bit. For those of you joining us for the very first time, the way it works is we just have conversations. We have topics that are either emailed from you or that we've selected. Well, that I've selected. I don't listen to them at all. We have email questions and topics that we just find fun. And on Tuesdays, it's all superhero stuff. All day long. So give us a like, give us a subscribe. And if you have an email you would like us to discuss, you can email us at digitalcharcuterie at gmail.com. It's on the bottom of the screen there. You can see it. Look at it go. We're going to get things started, though, with our first email question because we don't have a lot of time. All this, we've got so much to talk about. It's been such a fun week. And here we go. Hey, guys, love the new content you got going on recently. Thanks for taking my email. You're very welcome. Thanks for sending it in. I was just wondering, with Moon Knight being rated TV-14 and the Netflix shows coming over to Disney, do you think this will open the door for more adult-oriented MCU shows on the streaming service? Thanks, Tom Downey. That is a interesting question, because, Scott, you've been all over this Moon Knight TV-14. Yeah, you've mentioned this for a yeah. while. And uh, so I'll, I'll let you start this one. How about you take this one from the stop? Do you think this is going to open the door for, for maybe darker MCU stuff? And conversely, should they? Yeah, I think, well, I think A, they should, because DC already has an avenue for that. And we know it's all about competition. Disney and Marvel have a zero, zero existence right now, as far as like going as dark as what DC does, even with the humor side of some of these things. Um, but I don't want to jump to too many conclusions because I believe on the 16th, there's going to be more updates on Disney plus um, parental guidelines changing and things like that. So th I think that's the same day that the Netflix shows come over. Uh, I'm excited about all that stuff because, yeah, I mean, Disney plus is a place for kids to have content and I'm ready for some darker Marvel. They've already done the Marvel zombies. That's like one of my <laughs> favorite storylines. So to be able to do that outside of a cartoon, it gets a little uh, gory, you know. So, yeah, I'm hyped for sure. Steve, how about you, how about you on a personal level and on your kids' level? How about that? <laughs> well, that's a different story. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I think yeah, it's going to pave the way for for a little bit more to an extent. I mean, I don't think we're going to see anything um, as dark as DC um, so far, anyway. Um, but yeah, my question, you know, what thing I'm not sure on. When the Netflix shows arrive onto Disney Plus, are they going to be considered part of the Marvel MCU canon, or is it just going to be a complete, you know, separate thing that they're just offering for people to stream? That's a good question. I don't think. I think. I don't. I, I think that's going to make a difference whether how far in they go with it. I've heard rumors of a new it's Daredevil it. season. Are they going to do yeah, a new season? Yeah, I think that's. I think that's beyond rumors because one of the I, I can't remember her name. One of the actresses on the show really has been tweeting it out a lot, and she was seen. She tweeted mm -hmm. herself wearing a Disney Plus hat and says something. So I think a Daredevil yeah. is happening. And Vincent D'Onofrio did say for for uh, Hawk, uh, Hawkeye that 
uh, his character had the same backstory. They used the Netflix show kind of as a back, a loose backstory for his character. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good question, though, Steve, is how they're going to use those stories going forward if they happen or not. And th the other thing, too, though, does it even matter what happened in those stories for mm -hmm. the future stories? That's the big question, right? Is, does anything happen? Does anything happen in those stories that's significant enough to affect the news stories? Or can they just move on and say, yeah, you can pretend all of that happened and took place, but we're going to essentially ignore it and do what we're doing going forward. Just kind of bury it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I also it's there. It's there, right? Like it's there if you want to watch it still. Yeah. With the popular ones like Jessica Jones and Daredevil, I could see them fully embracing it and, uh, you know, trying to incorporate as much as they can with it. But it's the ones that like Iron Fist were, weren't, yeah as well received by the fans what's where do they uh ha, have a have, have a role in in all this uh, my guess is it'll just be forgotten but i think, I, think that's I think the show is coming over to disney plus will be a good barometer of like what they can do potentially with them are people gonna view them again on disney plus have they been viewed out uh I, for one, have to revisit Daredevil because I'll admit I maybe watched that towards the beginning. But as far as like my entertainment shows have never really been the focus of my stuff. So, like even Clone Wars animated stuff. I am guilty of not watching all those seasons. You know, I watch stuff towards the end. I'm more of a movie uh, fan overall. But I think the Daredevil stuff, if they're going to get new stuff from Daredevil, you know, he was in the Spider-Man movie and that could be a way to shoehorn in the other characters. But I think they're really just going to chase where the hype is or where the anticipation goes from us, the fans. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what it's going to be. It's, I don't think they're going to go beyond like, I don't know how far TV 14 is Scotty. I don't know how, how that is. <laughs> I don't know how yeah. that is. Is that like an R or is that lower than an R? Like how would that be? in? Well, I mean, know? in, in the simple like definitions of PG 13, it's like one F bomb. But if the Batman movie was any indication of what you can do in PG 13, uh, one year age difference, I'm not really sure. Um, <laughs> I'm just looking up some random right now. Well, TV is also different from movies as well. I mm -hmm, think the rating mm -hmm. systems are, it's a different rating board. So you have that. I think, okay, but looking at the, the actual question, will this usher in a new wave of of content, like high, like more adult-centric content? We're getting Werewolf by Night, which we talked about a couple times on the channel. Uh, Michael Giacchino's directing it. I'm really excited for it. I think it's going to go crazy. Blade's coming, but that's more theatrical. We're getting uh, Moon Knight is the one that's going to usher it in and then maybe Punisher is going to show up again in another show. That's the one that you really got to think, well, how far are they going to push those boundaries? I think this, I think Moon Knight is going to open that door, but I don't think that's going to be the reason we get more. I think they've already have a plan and Disney mm -hmm. Plus gives them the opportunity to do more stuff that's a little bit more orient, adult oriented. The theatrical stuff I think is always going to be what it is. It's always, and it should, and I think it should be because I think you know, DC is DC and Batman's Batman and, and all that. But I think the Marvel superheroes, none of them are dark and well, I shouldn't say none of them, but the ones that they're, they're not dark and brooding and they've established themselves. This is the, the important part is that they have established themselves as fair game for basically anybody to come in and enjoy. And sometimes they teeter a little bit darker than others, but, but they kind of, they know their role, they know their place and they know where to live. And so in the films, I think they stay there, but on TV, I think they can go ahead and push the boundaries because they have so many of these B, C, D list superhero comic characters that they can bring in that, you know, your kids guys aren't going to care about, but maybe us as adults, we look at it and we say, well, that's an intriguing story that maybe I'll be more interested in and leave the, the, pow, poom, kabam to the kids, and we get the dark brooding. Not even dark and brooding. I shouldn't say that. We'll leave mm -hmm. that for Like, Batman's enough. But you know what I mean? Like, the, the Punisher type stuff, the Daredevil type stuff. Bring that in for us. Yeah, and uh, this isn't... This is just a random website, but it does cite the United States TV parental guidelines. TV 14, essentially, is the uh, TV equivalent of PG-13. So, I mean, it could go as dark as Batman. But in the definition, it really just focuses on it contains violence in general and then all the sex stuff like innuendos, 
intercourse and in, being implied, things like that. So um, I don't know if that puts a damper on it for anybody as far as how dark it'll go. I think we'll need a little bit further push with parental codes to get much more than what Batman did in the movie. But Moon Knight, I think, is going to be a good test. Um, that has also, like, psychologically darker tones. Like, this guy has uh, dissociative, dissociative identity disorder, and he is battling with four personalities that literally yeah. take, over, take over his entire body uh, without his control. So for kids, stuff like that, and, you know, <laughs> mental health is a huge though. focus right now in our world. And I just think <laughs> yes. this, it's really good timing for this show overall. I'm pretty excited about seeing how a guy mm -hmm. deals with that. A guy, you know what I mean? Like a, a dad, potentially, things like that. So pretty cool. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot that they could do with this show. I'm really curious to see if they just do like the standard superhero mcu story or if they do take it a notch further and give us a more intellectual i don't know if that's intellectual story more yes, deep story right yeah i'm mm -hmm. wondering what they're gonna do what do you think steve yeah <clears throat> okay have okay. you guys ever seen uh the movie memento love memento long time yeah love memento. so give me some uh memento easter eggs like a post-it note somewhere that just yeah, reminds yeah, that's that a, just reminds him of something. That's a great idea. Hell yeah! What a great movie, Memento. That you know, Dude. Christopher Nolan kickstarted his career. He had uh, the following before that, but that was the movie that Obsessed. put him on the map. And him, Wally Feister, they did it as well. So good, such a wait, yeah. wait. Is that your favorite Nolan movie? Uh, dude, it's hard uh, because I'm like <laughs> such a a cult classic kind of film person, like Boondock Saints of all movies. You know, yeah, that's in we my top about that, three. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, dude, Memento. Have you watched there. that? Have you watched the Boondock Saints documentary yet? Was it Midnight uh, Director or something? I can't I remember the name of it. I don't know if I have. If it's recent, probably not. You've but. got it's no, it's old. It's got to be ten years old, maybe more. Now it is. If you like Boondock Saints and you like it's movie so making and you like and you like dickheads, you've got to watch <laughs> that documentary. It's like he honestly he go, he it, it starts off and like and Troy Harvey Duffy, Weinstein mean? goes into the. <laughs> It's go. He Harvey Weinstein goes in the bar he's working at and is like, I'll, I want to buy this script. So he gets the script, buys him the bar, buys the script, buys the bar, gives him like a couple million bucks. He's like, You make this movie, here's your deadline. And he keeps screwing up like every way. He has a <laughs> meeting with Ewan McGregor to be in the movie. Oh, he goes, man. we're gonna love each other, but they can't. And so then he hires his friends to make this documentary. So the documentary is made by his friends. So he sends you, he goes to a meeting with Ewan McGregor, but they can't afford to bring the camera crew. And it just That's like has awesome. a screen like he had a meeting with Ewan McGregor. It did not go well. And they, <laughs> they hated each other's guts. Dude, you've, it's. I'm going to have to watch it now. I mean, I'm already sold. It's, sold. It, it paints him in like a really bad light, but it, the documentary is phenomenal. It's like his friends made it. That's cool. And at the end, they're like working at like a film festival or something because they have no jobs. It's mm -hmm. it's a remarkable documentary. If you like Boondock Saints, you got to check it out. I can't remember the name of it, though. So what a waste uh, of a plug that was. <laughs> I'm sure it's um, easy to But Moon Knight, I, I'm really excited for Moon Knight. I think it's going to be cool. I saw the Empire. I don't know if you guys saw the Empire magazine covers that they sent. They they put out with, with uh, Moon Knight on them. They look pretty rad. Dude, Steve, the I'll Korean send them to you. I don't have them. I haven't seen the Korean poster. It's, uh, oh, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. I'm going to have to check it out. I really, I don't know. I just, I think Moon Knight might be, it could be the show that changes the MCU on Disney Plus in a good way for a long time. Potentially. It could mm -hmm. also reverse all that. All right. Let's move on to our second email question. And it is right. Bam. Hello. Hello. Now that the Batman is out and had a huge weekend. Do you think word of mouth will help it reach a billion dollars at the box office? I loved it, and so did my friends, but some are calling it too slow. Wanted to hear your thoughts. Ah, the billion dollar question. Everybody needs a, every movie has to make a billion dollars now for it to be a hit. I, I don't know how much this one's going to make, guys. I love this movie. You guys know I love this movie. I've talked about this movie to death. I've only seen it the one time. I'm going to see it again at some point. I do love it. That being said, yesterday on Manic Monday with Andrew Fantasia, I said that this movie will be overrated. A lot of people are going to see this movie as being overrated. It's gotten so much praise. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes is like 85%. The 
audience scores like 90 percent. like it's it's so well praised that when you go in to see this movie that this movie is not a typical superhero action movie that mm. a lot of people are going to mm. leave in being like no that wasn't as good as they said and then when you when somebody overhypes something you like you like it even less and i think that's going to be a, a case with this movie is it is a three hour slow burn i know a lot of people think a lot of stuff could be edited out i'm gonna say this i don't like long movies we all know that but i love the book of boba fett which i have been on record as saying as well and that show is also a slow burn and it does what it wants to do in the amount of time it does it it doesn't cater to anybody it's like this is what i'm doing and i as i get older because i am an old man i kind of i think i appreciate that style of storytelling more not not necessarily it has to be long but I'm okay. Like if you show me, if you give, if you present me a TV show or a film that I, I that is made, that is quality made, and there has been time, effort, and care put into it, and you can see all that, I think I'm on board a lot more. But I'm definitely, I'm old. I'm not the, I'm not the majority on a lot of things. I like, I like the Snyder movies before it was hip to like the Snyder movies, and I got roasted online about that. You can go back years ago too. This is just, like it's just this is just me, but I do think the three hour time and that the fact that it's not like Avatar where it's a quick three hours, this is a slow burn three hours. I think that's going to hinder it. And on top of that, Scotty, it's going to your HBO Max in a month, for, like just over a month from now, that's going to take away from it at the box office. Because why would I go see a movie for three hours in a theater when I can stay home and watch it on TV? That's a good point, but I heard that this movie in IMAX is ridiculous, yes. and uh, I think that's going to help it because IMAX does cost a little bit more. But man, like this movie delivers, and you're talking about a book of <laughs> Boba Fett. Like a lot of fans are coming off of feeling like the book of Boba Fett did the opposite of deliver. So once the word of mouth on this starts to spread, I feel like people are going to go expecting to see the Batman. And it, they're going to get exactly that. Like the movie doesn't try to be something that it's not. Uh, and if you're a fan of anything, Batman year one, the long Halloween, like all the stuff's in there, man. Um, but yeah, and I'm not, I mean, I'm not trying to take anything away from Boba Fett, but as far as like, how dare we're, you? we're talking about the difference of a show and a movie too. I know I'm being very, like, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. but yeah, um, <laughs> The overall vibe, because I'm online talking mainly about yeah. Star Wars, is that, you know, people have been clamoring for something that's very connected to a character. And Batman is a fan favorite. I think the word of mouth is very positive and that the fan that the delivers on what the whole movie is, too. So I don't think there's a lot of disappointment. I get the length, but yeah. All right, Steve, if hit us. Global box office. Did you see what the global box office numbers are for the weekend? Uh, it was, it two, last I saw it was two four. It was two forty eight, but I think it went higher than that. So yeah. let's say between two forty eight and two sixty or so. Let's just say so that. that's a quarter of your way to your. I don't have. Oh, I have my phone. I'll... No, I looked it up. It's two forty eight point five million. Could be could be higher, but anyways, <laughs> the, point, the point I'm trying to make is. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're already a quarter of the way there to a billion dollars. I, I don't see any way that this doesn't make a billion yeah. dollars. How do they, how anyway. do they, um, when it goes to HBO Max, how do they attribute money towards the film for that? How do they uh, decide, you know, what, what financial, you know, what, what does it get out of being on HBO Max is what I'm trying to say. I believe they, they look at the, the views that it gets in the subscriber, kind of like our YouTube channel. Subscribe! If they look at that <laughs> subscriber count and the, and the amount of views that it got. So I think last year it was, Mortal Kombat was one, King Kong and Godzilla was two, and Suicide Squad was three, I believe. That's how it worked. Mm -hmm. um, but, but as far movies, as like the movies... box office, it doesn't contribute. No, it doesn't so at it all. It would just be so... like the cutoff is when it comes out of theaters. Or if then it does something like what Endgame does and goes re-release in theaters with the, you know, how they will bring movies back <laughs> into theaters, that does count, I believe. I'd hate to see the towards extent. more, <laughs> Yeah. A six hour version where they're like, we know you we just put in a whole lot of more Joker. Um, like the Joker is the main character, the Joker is the main character in the new cut, and it's literally Matt Reeves just had a green screen in his garage and shot Joker scenes for this movie. Jason, if you put Momoa, that one scene in it, if you put that one scene in it, that'll make money. Jason Momoa said he would sit through a four hour Dune movie <laughs> that probably exists. 
<laughs> I haven't seen Dune. I haven't seen Dune yet. Have you guys seen Dune? I'm going to watch good. it I March March, 8, March 18th. It hits Crave, Steve, uh, here oh, nice. in Canada. So that's our streaming service here. We get our own personal streams. Mm-hmm. That's our that's our uh, B grade HBO Max. <laughs> that's yeah. what, that's yeah. what that is. I think that's a movie. <laughs> Like some old movies are hard to watch for like younger crowds, but I think the old Dune is is watchable if you're gonna go right into the new one afterwards. And it's no, very, I've never seen I've never seen the old one. one so do, do I need to see the old one to see the new one? No, but like I say, in the old one is like it holds up over time. I think because it's mm-hmm. a very like fantasy type of a story. Interesting. But, whereas I've like, never seen it, but I actually have the making of it yeah whereas like you know some uh old 80s movies come off as campy i guess yeah the dune movie the old one's not campy in my opinion no they definitely so you guys both think that the batman's gonna make a billion dollars at the box office like no question (laughs) no question (laughs) i'm curious to see how it does witchcraft to make sure it happens (laughs) i think this weekend's gonna be a, a big tell for it. I hope it does because uh, it was a Tommy Emmerich, the mm-hmm. head of Warner Brothers, said that they're going to focus their DC slate on having more director driven films come out. And I'm super stoked about that because I love the Suicide Squad. I love Joker. I love the Batman. Mm-hmm. And those are the big three. Those are like, and the Peacemaker, the show. I think Peacemaker show in his comments really had a lot to do with it as well because they get like those movies in that show are very filmmaker driven. Everything about those was filmmaker driven studio notes. I'm sure were there, but it's like, here's the filmmaker. Here's their vision. What do you got? And mm. those three, three and a half, including the TV show, I think they succeeded on every level. Like, and whether you like them or not is one thing, but I think each of those films is very, very solid and they are exactly the movie that they set out to make. All those movies I think are, perfect in what they are that's what i like i mean if you don't like it, you don't like it and whatever we can get into that but for what they are and what the director brought to them is exactly what they wanted and i think they delivered yeah, I yeah. <laughs> 567 million dollars for the batman could you imagine this is oh man no i'm joking could you imagine i do worry though that that there's a modern audience that goes into these theaters and i'm not just saying young people there's older people too that go into these movies and they want the flash and it's not about the slow burn there's not an appreciation for that and i know when i went into this i know they they were comparing it a lot to seven and zodiac in chinatown and i and you know and i, I always brought up uh spider-man homecoming they always compared it to john hughes and i never and i'm watching it i was like this is not a john hughes movie like i never felt mm-hmm. it was a good movie but it was not a John Hughes movie. And they kept saying it. People were like, it's like a John Hughes movie. I'm like, it's not like a John Hughes movie. The sequel was more like a John Hughes movie than the first one. But this movie actually felt like the movies that they said it was going to feel like. So, and those movies are all great. And I thought this one was as well. But I think if you're going into this expecting something different, I don't know. I'm really, this weekend is going to be such a huge weekend for this movie. I hope it makes a billion dollars because, well, obviously a sequel, which I think is going to happen anyway. But also I want more director driven films Mar- marvel has perfected their serial storytelling for the general audiences let dc do something different we don't need it all to be the exact like if dc movies just turn into marvel movies it's going to get boring fast so let them do this for a little while hopefully joker made a billion dollars hopefully they make more money and then when that settles down then you know you can do your roger revis stuff i don't know Yeah, hopefully that uh, some of this um, like multiverse of madness. Hopefully we get like a little Sam Raimi effect, and you talk about you know director driven stuff. That's hopefully a good point. Um, open the door for more of that kind of stuff. And I'm not sure like this uh, because what's her name? Chloe Zhao is doing the entire Kenobi. Yeah. So you know maybe we'll get Deborah some direct- Deborah Chow. Or, yeah, Deborah Chow. I don't even know who I said, um, but yeah, maybe we'll get some more like uh, the le- uh, whole shows and things be directed by one person rather than what they did in Mandalorian. So I don't know. Well, to that point, um, if you look at uh, Rick Fremmer, you he says he loved yeah. the way that it was different directors coming in, right? So that I think recent. it's different. I think 
Yeah, I think TV shows, though, are very, they're different, too. I think Obi-Wan's going to be like a limited four-episode series, which one director can come in and do. But I think these bigger ones, you know, it's the showrunner's show anyway at the end of the day, right? So, Steve, any any final thoughts on Batman making $700 billion? (laughs) (laughs) Sheesh. I smell money. That's all I can say. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, th- three. Uh, Rob, who comes on here, Rob McDonald, who he's seen it three times already, and I love the movie, but that's nine hours. Jealous. That's nine hours of your life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would watch it at home probably three hundred times by now, but nine mm-hmm. nine times is it's a little. Maybe bit just on the I haven't been to the theater. I haven't been to the theater in a while because here in Ontario, uh, the theaters were closed for quite some time. Um, so that's the first my first time back at the theater, and I. I didn't find it. It took three hours to me. It didn't seem long. Uh, I'm not saying it was short, but it, it didn't drag on for me. And, um, you know, I'm not the world's biggest Batman fan. So the fact that it it, it had that effect, maybe just because I hadn't been to the theater in so long. Uh, I was just excited to finally be in there, have some popcorn, uh, get the theatrical experience. So I, I think that's what's going to help draw fans into this. Um it's, it's a good one to see at the theater on the big screen. Like you said, uh, in IMAX, especially. I just go for the trailer and the yeah, popcorn. Yeah, this was my first time in the theater. <laughs> the length of the movie doesn't really matter. <laughs> well, the, 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 my, the one thing I hate about the length of this movie is when people complain about the length of this movie. It's like, you knew yeah. what it was going into it. Mm-hmm. That was, that's my yeah. only thing. It's like, you can, like, before it comes out, you're like, three hours. We'll try to tell hell? you. But when, <laughs> when, when you pay the money to go in to see a three-hour movie, don't pretend... Don't pretend you could say you found it boring for three hours. That's a fair argument. But when you <laughs> complain that it's three hours, that's a stupid argument because that's what it is. And if you're paying $15, $20, 25, 30, whatever to go see a movie, make it longer now. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> More bang for the buck. <laughs> that's how, right. Exactly. All right. Let's move on now to a movie that I am getting very hyped for guys. I don't know why. And I don't think I should be, but I'm getting hyped for this movie called Craven the Hunter. The, the cast is filling out. Uh, uh, they have all these actors and actresses are boarding. And uh, before I went on today, I saw an interview with uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson. And he, uh, what was this for? This was for the Hero Magazines. And Hero Magazine, Aaron Taylor Johnson. This is what he said. You guys ready for this? It's going to yes. blow your mind. Yes. He says that I'm in England. I'm not in London, but it's just outside, close to the production office for Craven the Hunter. I'm staying here because I've got a bunch of stunt training to do for this movie. So the director and I are bunking up for the next couple of weeks. You do come at it from a different angle, which is back to back to front for me. It's like you're coming at it from the physical aspect because that's what you can see from a comic book. You go, oh, he looks like that. I have to look like that. You see that and then you start to backtrack and dig deeper and go, this is where he or- originates from. Then he has this relationship and that relationship. You just hope that you're going to portray something that you can bring to life. There is, again, room for an interpretation and you want to be able to bring something and let it pop off the page. It's another new challenge. We talk about putting yourself under pressure all the time. I don't step away from controversial sheesh. I don't know what it is, but I'm always drawn to the thing that might actually give me an effing stroke. Scotty, are you excited for Hunter after hearing Aaron Taylor Johnson's comments? Dude, that's, yeah, that's awesome. I hope he goes full Hugh Jackman and, like, transforms into Craven. Have you guys seen the Bullet Train trailer? He's in that. So he's in the Bullet Train trailer. No, and he's I... fighting Brad Pitt, and he's got a full stash and a full head of hair, bro. <laughs> like, it's down to his shoulders. And I'm not saying that's his actual hair, but if he is trying to pop off the page, like, craven has got a full head of hair, like, down below his shoulders. And he looks like a straight-up savage, like, saber tooth from the comics. Nice. So, so craven. Yeah, and he wears, like, this big old, like, white fur, like, vest thing and the spear. Like, I hope he's imposing. Because he's supposed to be one of Spider-Man's like scariest villains, one of. Yeah, and you know, Steve, they wanted to use him in Black Panther, and they said no, we're using him for something else. And I think there was a uh, the Amazing Spider-Man was going to use him as a spinoff in their Sinister Six, Six movie, but of course, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. we all know what happened to the Amazing Spider-Man franchise. Steve, you hear these comments? What do you think? 
Uh, I don't know. Um, his uh, that 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 post you just read off is kind of went over my head. Anyway, I wasn't thinking too much of it to be honest. Um, I was just looking at the cast right before we uh, we came on, and I didn't realize that Russell Crowe had signed on for it. Um, that yep. intrigues me to get him into the MCU. Uh, well, not not really MCU, the Sony ver whatever. Yeah, the um, Sony, the Sony CU. <laughs> yeah. Is there any, any any information out there as to what character he might be portraying? The rumor is the father, but no one knows. And I'm unfamiliar okay. with that character. Like 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 Craven's father. Oh, okay. I feel you. Okay. Wasn't well, there? I thought Matt Smith was rumored to be in that too at one point or something. Am I? Well, he's in Morbius, so if they're gonna connect, yeah. them, they could. But I feel like he's just gonna die in Morbius, and it's gonna be one another villain. I hope not, man. In these movies, I just me too. But don't yeah. you get the feeling that he's just gonna die? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I don't. Yeah. I, I don't want him to. Like, I don't think anybody wants. I think we're all sick of villains getting killed off yeah. in the first go around in these movies. He is hunger, right? Did they can? Did we confirm? Ah, uh, he's, he's a he's the Sony. He's a version of him. Yeah, he basically yeah. is, but yes and no. A uh, but the vampire cra- of some sort. Yeah, the Craven movies also added Alessandra, Alessandro Nivola and uh, Ariana DeBose have both signed on to be in it. The cast is filling out. I think they start shooting it like this month or next month, like really soon. They really get mm-hmm. into this soon because I think it's supposed to come out uh, even sooner. I don't. Blue Beetle has some casting news as well. We we're not going to get into that today, but they've cast a whole bunch and they're supposed to be shooting as well very very soon and that's when scotty nice. we talked about last week that i'm looking forward to that blue beetle movie but mm. i'm also looking forward to craven because the venom venom is great i don't know how morbius is going to be i'm kind of i'm kind of i'm madam web i i have no idea what the hell's <laughs> up with that but this craven movie craven seems like a character like of all these characters this one i don't know i really have a fun feeling about craven i think they could pull off a really cool craven movie and aaron taylor johnson is an actor for me he showed up in Tenet, and and I thought he like when he I, I just think he's a really talented actor who's never really gotten a sh- fair shot. At, I mean, he was in he was the lead in Godzilla, which. Eh, but I think he's a t- more talented actor than that. Shows. I think he was great in kick ass and I think he's able to steal Love scenes. And if he's going to if he's going to bulk, he's great in that movie, too. But if he's able to bulk up for Craven, because when I first heard he was cast as Craven, I was like, yeah, really? But when, but if he can bulk up for Craven and really pull it off, I think this movie could be like this could be. The, and, I, and I know we all love Venom and everything, but this could be the the tentpole for the Sony verse. This could be their big their big one. Yeah, yeah. And he doesn't have to get that big. He's more like a Brad Pitt Troy, like yeah, well, yeah, yeah, definitely imposing, but athletic too. Like he's going to be able to do some stuff, some Spider Man esque flipping and spinning. Yeah, so. it's gonna. He has a potential. Steve, how big of a Craven fan are you? I don't know anything about Craven. <laughs> so, He's got uh, an accent too. I yeah, think yeah. pretty thick. So <laughs> my only exposure to him was the 1990s Spider-Man cartoon. Yes. So I don't know how true to the comics that representation was. Uh, that leaves a very one-dimensional picture in my mind of what the character is going to be. So I hope <laughs> I hope that's not the way it's going to be. I hope it's different. I hope it's going to totally uh, blow my mind because mm-hmm. if it's based on that one-dimensional cartoon character, mm-hmm. you know. I think he'll more than likely yeah. be a Sinister Six villain when they officially announce a movie. He's definitely going to be a member, I think. Yeah, they're they're Sony versus leading towards something. Mm-hmm. In the comics, he has a history with with Black Panther, right? Uh, James mentioned something about that. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think he does. I'm not. I didn't read a lot of Black Panther. Comics. I read Spider Man growing up. But mm-hmm. That was I'm my trying, big thing. I'm just but I know other... that Coogler, Coogler wanted him in in Black Panther, so he must. Have. I mean, it would make sense. Like yeah. that kind of that makes sense. I'm just trying to figure out what other characters has Craven really been associated or or been around in the, in the comics that can kind of help steer us. Uh, give us a picture of what might be happening in the movie. Because, like I said, other than Spider Man, I I drawn blanks. I don't know. Yeah, same. I think it's going to stick tr- more true to the Spider-Verse stuff. But who knows? Yeah, We're... I mean, these are all Spider-Man yeah. villains. That's all Sony owns, right? Sony only owns Spider-Man villains, so they can only do what they can do. We were talking about Morbius. Did you you had more Morbius stuff? We're going to be talking about Morbius. You want to move on to Morbius? Sure. 
Well, why not? Let's move on to Morbius talk. Here's the thing. Morbius is coming out April 1st. Apparently that's official. It's actually, it's finally <laughs> going to come out, guys. Don't it's, move it. No Stop more moving. delays. Yeah, yeah seriously. Who the heck? Apparently no more delays. So we're going to find out. But I don't know. I was just thinking of of the show, of the movie, and what could happen. And then you think of No Way Home. And guys, spoilers for No Way Home if you have not seen it. We're also going to do more Batman spoilers. So if you haven't seen those movies probably get on it before you finish up here but if you take into the account because so this movie was supposed to come out like seven years ago before no way home but now it's after no way home and i was just thinking what do you guys think will vulture know who peter parker is during the events of morbius <laughs> i was gonna say yes but then i thought about it well does this have timeline wise does this take place after the last spider-man movie because then the simple answer take place no. in the same universe. Yeah, but did Doctor Strange's spell where everybody forgets mm. who Peter Parker is? Did it affect the other universes? That's that's a question. You know, which Peter Parker specifically do people forget? So I I had an answer. I was in my head. I was thinking, oh, for sure, yeah, yeah, he knows. But all of a sudden, just, that that just clicked with me. Maybe not. Maybe you not. ask does you ask does who know Peter Parker Spider Man Vulture Vulture Vulture, um. At the yeah, in Morbius, does he know? I'm not a hundred percent sure. But Vulture was Vulture was only defeated by Spider Man, right? But he knew who Peter Parker was because Peter Parker was yeah. dating his daughter. Yep. And he kept the secret uh when Scorpion was asking. He didn't tell him. Hmm. Yeah, that's a very good question. Can you imagine they retcon so that Scorpio scene ha happens after the Doctor Strange spell? Like that actually happened after this. He actually doesn't know who he is. <laughs> that would well, cheapen. Okay, so that would cheap, cheapen Vulture a lot. What if? Uh, and man, this is gonna be like a freaking. <laughs> this is such a loophole. But what if? Because they sent villains back into their timelines, right? So say there's a villain who didn't get sent back and then he just gets petty crime put in that prison. He's the only guy that really knows who Peter Parker is. And he's in there trying to convince people like Scorpion and Vulture that it's Peter Parker and no one believes him except for like those two people. Because who knows? Like they only show us the villains that got through that they could find. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not you know, I don't know. And like I said, that's a very big retcon slash stretch <laughs> reach, kind of. <laughs> but it is yeah, confusing, but... man. It's very confusing. Too many timelines to figure yeah. out what's going on. I think he's gonna know though, because I think this movie, whether or not this movie would would acknowledge No Way Home, I don't know. But I just think this movie was supposed to come out. I like a year or two before no way home, like a year and a half before no way home. I don't think it's has any consequence to the plot at all in it. Uh, because I don't even know if they're leading towards Spider-Man because as far as we know in venom, Spider-Man does exist. Obviously we've seen him in a poster, but I don't know if Spider-Man mm -hmm. is, is a, is the antagonist of Morbius in this. If he looks as if, if he views him in that light, I don't even know if Spider-Man is acknowledged by Morbius or anyone within um, so well, the poster I don't... on the wall in the alley as he's walking by. So yeah, know, but but he's got to know but, that he. Exists. But I mean, does it if does it if but does it affect him at all the, in what he's doing? Like, does story. he even care? Yeah, does he even care? Yeah. Like when he meets when he meets Vulture in prison, would they even care about talking about Spider Man or Peter Parker? Because there's a that 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 person in this universe is of no consequence to Doctor Michael Morbius. Mm -hmm. Vulture got captured. Did he get captured by like Shield or somebody? I don't think it was like normal. I thought it was Happy well, Hogan. Scor or no, he goes I into like, was a regular prison. prison. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it was just the whatever mm -hmm. their prison is over there. Because my brain still goes to like Morbius could end with him figuring out that he can jump through dimensions because he's got that ability or whatever. And you might not be wrong about that. And so he gets picked up, but it's actually not picked up by like the normal cops. He gets picked up by like Shield or the people working in place of the Avengers and stuff. And so when they're walking him through there, he's just crossing paths maybe with him. But there's a crossover somewhere. There has to be. 
Yeah, the problem is MCU and Sony and how far, yeah. how close are they? How they're going to do together. it? Yeah, I don't, I don't think they've. I, I think this is pure Sony. I don't think the MC Marvel has much to do with what they're doing over there, aside from the Tom Holland mm-hmm. Spider Man aspect of it and playing nice and letting Venom be in the post credit scene. Which actually, let me ask you guys this: post credit scene for that movie, did it lead to disappointment in, in Venom? Venom's role in No Way Home. How did you feel about that? How did that work into your mindset? I was hyped. We talked about that and the potential for like null. So if people missed that live stream, yeah. Um, just because a symbiote got left behind, it doesn't even mean it has to be a Venom. Uh, the null who is the king in black, he's like. Venom was hinting at it right before all of this took place. He's like the hive mind, the billions of years and knowledge that they all share. So I don't think that that line was just put in there as a throwaway. I think it was hinting at null and that that little thing left behind was like one of his little uh, sentries or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a huge Venom fan. So anything putting him into the MC, give me, give me more Venom. I'm, I'm, I was all for, so I was excited to see it. So the, the like I thought the the end credit scene in Carnage was great, and then I thought the end credit scene in No Way Home was equally great. But I think some people were anticipating Venom to be in No Way Home. We were never promised that. Like that's one thing mm-hmm. we you know it was never a promise. I thought I thought post mid credit scene, whatever you want to call it, end credit, post credit, mid credit scene for one, and then another they. they they uh, scratched each other's backs. I liked it. I thought they worked out well, and it was a lot of it was fun on both accounts. Like it was fun in Venom, and it was fun in Spider Man. Mm-hmm. There's a deleted scene, I think, too, from Let There Be Carnage, where Carnage is talking. He, Carnage is like outside of Woody Harrelson's body, talking with Greek, a hive mind in general, but he's talking about that kind of a concept where like they're all knowing across the universe and stuff like that. So. There's hints here and there about the bigger picture when it comes to Venom. Yeah, it, eventually Sony and Marvel are on a collision course to become like one storyline. There's not going to be any way to really avoid some of this stuff, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I think I think, I think of, you're right. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to Steve's favorite comic book character of all time, Spawn. <laughs> <laughs> he's giving the he's giving a look of I don't I don't even know what that means. Uh Scotty Spawn is your Spawn is your second favorite comic book movie of all time next to Dolph Lundgren's Punisher. We <laughs> we know that I put it right up there but with Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin is Spawn <laughs> that came out so, similar time frames. I saw both of them in the theater. Uh one I enjoyed, one I did not. But this but Spawn now, Todd McFarlane is all in on the Spawn. They've been developing this movie for quite some time. Uh, it, I believe it did have a director attached to it. Uh, I can't remember who it is right now. I'll look it up in a second. But with the success of the Batman, with the success of Joker, with the success, with the success of Peacemaker, and now Moon Knight being TV 14, guys, talks and uh, the production is starting to heat up, according to Tom McFarlane, on the Spawn movie because the R-rated superhero is alive and well, and this is what people want. And now Spawn went from the mid burner to the front burner and Scotty, they're making a new spawn for you. How excited are you? I'm excited because I like the character of spawn, but I'm skeptical because haven't we done this before a few times with spawn? I feel like, uh, at one point I heard rumors about a script where, and like, I swear to God, at one point Todd McFarlane wasn't all in on this stuff. Am I just, yeah. I mean, yeah. So I think you're right. I think you're right. I there was a right. script where he was going to be like more of a specter, like haunting type character. And you weren't actually going to see him like in physical form and things like that. So if it's the exact opposite of that, and now he's all in and like going to do a real like horror spawn story, <laughs> that's what I want. So if they're going to do that, and even stay more true to the old one. Like I liked the old movie. I thought it was very campy at times, but I was a kid. I saw it. I loved um, John Leguizamo's character, the clown, the evil Jiminy Cricket. But I don't know so, much about this project. Yeah. Are there any casting information out there yet? It's uh, McFarlane is going to be directing. 
They should bring back this Michael is an archon coming. This is a comic coming soon. I just I just clicked on this link. The comic creator has been working alongside Bloomhouse to develop Spawn feature since 2017, which would mark McFarlane's directorial debut. The movie would star Oscar winner Jamie Foxx's Spawn with MCU alum hmm. Jeremy Renner playing Twitch. How about that? Hmm. Jamie that's Fox, intriguing. huh? Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that's still going to be the case. I mean, this is 2017. That's five years ago he's been working on this, like you said. Oh. Um, but but he's attributing, mm. uh, like I said, those movies I said, but also Venom, Let There Be Carnage, which is which is a hit. He's a, he's saying these these dark movies, these adult centric movies, comic book films are becoming a hit, and now it seems like a perfect time to bring Spawn back. And Steve, I don't know. I know you're not a huge Spawn guy, but. Yeah. I got nothing. Yeah, I got nothing against it. Uh, I'm I'm a completely clean slate with Spawn. Um, I saw the movie, you know, 20 years ago. I remember John Leguizamo, and that's about it. I don't yep. remember the movie. So like it was, said, great, going, it was great though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going out of a clean slate. Um, whatever they want to give, you know, I'll I'll, I'll watch it. You know, uh, I always found the uh, character to be interesting, but I never read the comics. I never really got involved too much in that world. So. I'll give it a chance. Yeah, this is becoming my it's, mantra, but they gotta just let creators create. Like I the think people, they, the people that made the stuff, if they want to get involved in doing a movie, I'm all in, all in. Casting you will know, be big on this. It, it, they they have to cast an A-lister for this to to, to get people's attention. Mm-hmm. Get, yeah. Well, yeah. Jimmy Fox is sticking. You got that, and then Jimmy Renner's good, and I think those are good names for Spawn. Yeah, Jimmy Fox has some range if it's like, you know, his actually the Django is a very close parallel to Spawn hmm. with the whole thing yeah, so. how he lost his wife and everything. Actually, just thought of that one. But yeah, yeah. I'm excited for it. I do think uh, John Leguizamo stole the show in the Spawn. I think that's a performance that's so good and it gets overlooked because the movie's not so great. Martin Sheen kind of stinks up the joint. Uh, she was pretty good, but it, the character was not the greatest. And I know, so sorry, Scotty, I'm ruining the movie for you on every level. But uh, I, I just remember watching in the theaters thing. Uh, but you know, my, I've told Steve this, but my story with Spawn is when in the early 90s when Image Comics became like a thing, I was, uh, I think I was 12, 11 or 12 around there. And I was obsessed with comics. So me and my friends would always collect comics. And that's when Superman, it was around the time Superman got killed off with Doomsday. And I would go every few weeks or whatever to the comic shop and buy my death of Superman, funeral for a friend, those things. And Image would be out and I'd buy the Max and I'd buy Pit and I'd buy Savage Dragon. I'd buy all these Image comics that they would do. I They even made a parody version of their own comics, making fun of it. Like it was weird. And I bought that. The only one that I didn't buy was Spawn. <laughs> and Spawn was the only one I said, no, nah, I'm not. My friend brought issue one of Spawn over to my house on like a Friday night and I read it and I was like, not interested. And I would go to like these comic shows that, or car, they were called car shows where they sold hockey and baseball cards, stuff like that, football cards. And they would have comics and I would go and I'd buy, all, I'd buy like issue one of all these image comics. And the only one I had no interest in was Spawn. And so I will never forgive myself for that because Spawn went on to being the only one of those characters that <laughs> seems to have any kind of future at all. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, you know, maybe if that, if I would have uh, been smart enough, guys, I would be rich and not uh, talking to you right now. Well put. I'm sure I have so many old toys <laughs> that we just gave away in garage sales for 25 cents that are worth so much oh, money yeah. right now. I know. It's <laughs> like, there's like there's some kids right now that are just they're loaded because of what you used to have. Yep. They're like, oh man. All right, let's move on. We're gonna skip over uh the one, but we're gonna talk about uh the Arkham Asylum show on HBO Max, guys. We're moving right along. HBO Max, Arkham Asylum. This used to be the GCPD show, the Gotham City Police show. And Mary says that it kind of turned into the Arkham Asylum show, and it's going to be like a horror show. Like, it's going to be horror in Arkham Asylum. Have you guys played the Arkham City games at all? A little bit. The Arkham Knight. Steve. Uh Arkham Knight, Arkham yeah. City, Arkham, mm-hmm. Arkham Asylum. I love. I think those games are a lot of fun. It definitely paints Arkham in in this cool light. I'm curious to see what they're going to do with it. You guys see, I saw the movie now. How do you feel about an Arkham show with the knowledge that you have from that movie? 
Well, they didn't steer too much into the Ar Arkham Asylum in the movie, so it's still open to interpretation. Um, they could they could do a lot with it. I'm excited for it. I, I'm not really a horror guy, but I, I like it because I, I I wasn't down with the idea of a GCPD show because I feel like we got that with Gotham. Half of Gotham was GCPD yeah. and. and uh, so if you're steering away from that, going more towards Arkham Asylum, it's something a little bit newer. You know, give me a different take on it. Um, I'm a, yeah. I, what do you think? When I first heard about this, uh, I was worried because you know it sounds like they're canceling a show on us. But <laughs> I think a lot of that GCPD stuff can go into the Penguin uh, series, yeah. so oh, yeah. yeah, won't necessarily miss it at all. Um, but it's, Arkham... just being, it's just being placed differently. Sorry, it's just being yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just being spread out. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, so is the GCPD show happening still, or no? It's the Arkham okay. show. It's now. become Arkham. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I feel like the uh, Telltale games uh, we yeah. mentioned were pulled a lot from in the Batman movie. So uh, I might actually have to go back and play that. I don't know if I ever played that all the way through. I did the Walking Dead one. With a girl Clementine, yeah, which was yeah. pretty good. But I'm playing the Batman one now. I got it. it was a free, free yeah. game of the month on PS Plus, so I'm playing it. It's a lot of fun. It's cool. Like it's a good story in this. Definitely this movie, the Batman um refer it does it references it, it kind of borrows from that quite a bit. There's a lot of mm -hmm. similarities in there. I just think when we watch this Batman movie, you know, Martha Wayne is Martha Arkham. And there's a whole mm. thing about her, and she might have been a little crazy. And I think the, like that might play into the show a little bit to kind of develop that. But also, this is where all the Batman's top tier, bottom tier, all of his crazy villains are in Arkham Asylum. So the idea of it being a horror show really, really kind of fits. And, and there's going to be a video on the channel soon with what I did with Rob McDonald, and we talk about he, like Matt Reeves is like, it's down to be down to earth, nitty gritty, blah, blah, blah. But how perfect would it be, guys, for in a horror centric show called Arkham Asylum or whatever they call it. You get man bat and you do man bat in the style of the fly. And you kind of have that going on. I oh, think that would be kind of sick. Dude, that would be ridiculous. Cause you could ground <laughs> that. In, it would it would be, it wouldn't be reality, but you can ground mm. that in a reality that's believable in this universe. Have they indicated how long the series is? Is it like a short, a short I don't think they know. six episode thing? Because like, I'm I'm struggling to think how are we going to stretch this out to be a full season of a show and maybe a season two, season three, like with going under the the, the horror genre. Um, you know, if it's like a six episode little like limited limited run series, I think they could do wonders with it. But I think the longer it gets, the harder it's going to be to 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 to, to fill that. I don't think you're wrong. My only, the only thing that has me hopeful for whatever they're doing is this obviously started off as a GCPD show and they turned it into this, which tells me they have something. The other thing that concerns me though, Scotty, is that Peacemaker, James Gunn wrote it, directed it within like five days. Like it seems like it happened. Bam, bam, bam. This one's like, do they know what they're doing or are they just like, they just have, they just have uh, pipe dreams right now. I think they do know what they want to do and they're just like the internet's so good at finding this stuff that we're just finding it so early but I think it's all going to come out in the end and that Matt Reeves has, has a greater plan in the works here I hope so I would love a Batman the Reeves verse as he calls it because again I said this yesterday but Batman Spider-Man X-Men they have their own MC like they are their own MCU they don't need anything else there's mm -hmm. they're so rich with characters and content that you don't need to bring in Superman or Aquaman into Batman I think Reeves was right on that and hey, look don't get me wrong the Batflack movie I would be all in on as well but Batman is so rich with characters Steve that I don't think you need to to go to that well no um It'd be really interesting. I, I've been thinking about what you said about you know kind of creating the man bat thing, and uh, <laughs> that I don't know that that's that stuck with me. I like that idea. <laughs> it just like I don't know. It just feels like if you're not gonna do it in a movie, why not? I don't know. Batman has so many cool villains, and when you ground it in reality, you're stuck with five. But if you if you just like expand just a little bit, you can have so you can be so much rich content. And the MCU is smart. They started with Iron Man, and that was grounded in reality. 
And then they were like, well, Captain America's coming, or the Hulk, and that's a little bit less reality. Captain America, a little bit less reality. And then Thor, they were like, ah, screw it. <laughs> like, I, there's no, like, we, whatever. And, but once Thor hit, and I don't even really like the first Thor movie, to be honest, but once Thor came into play, the MCU changed forever. It allowed your Guardians of the Galaxy. It allowed Captain Marvel. It allowed anything that you wanted now. Secret yeah. Invasion, Secret Wars, Aliens, everything now they can do. Because they were, they they were like, screw it, Thor's an Avenger. We need Thor to be part of this. They didn't care. They were like, screw reality. This is comic book reality, and this is what it is. And I'm not saying Batman necessarily has to do go that far, but there are so many cool villains, Scotty, that they can use and abuse, but they're not going to because of this grounded in reality. Yeah. What was that last part? <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> sorry, I'm I'm there's a lot going on over here too. I'm, I'm that's all right. No, I'm just saying that there's so many there's so many villain Batman villains that they can have, but they're so stuck with it being grounded in reality yeah. they can't use those. But at the same time, man, spoiler, 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 spoiler for the Batman. Batman, the dude injected himself with venom. I'm telling you. Or was they're that adrenaline? Hinting. I thought it was I adrenaline. They're hinting at this stuff. It was a green vial of something, man. And uh, I love that it came out of a utility belt. That had me. I was. I blacked <laughs> yeah. out. I blacked out of that. <laughs> well, st- so little things like that, like that technology, the Mister Freeze, like cryo cryostasis type technology, the Scarecrow fear, uh, that yeah. type of stuff. That can be a way to dip their toe into the deeper supernatural stuff, I guess, or mythical side of Batman. Yeah villains i don't know if this universe is ever going to get there but we could see some crazy villains i think depending i hope so i mean there's so the many joker is miss- pretty out there <laughs> especially in this one yeah um there i'm yeah i talked to rob earlier be on the channel i think tomorrow where we talk about it, matt reeves wants hush and mr freeze are, are being talked about for the sequel and he even mentions how robin could be brought in so i think I think Reeves really loves the source material. He loves Batman. He loves the comics and all that that they have. And I think if he can find a way to bring them in here, he's going to. And all I've got to say to him is he made two really, really good movies about walking and talking apes who take over Earth and kind of take over the world. And and that and those were I would argue that those are are grounded in a reality as well. So if he could do that, he should he has free reign to do whatever he wants with the Batman and make him as extreme as possible. Yep. So sold. Solid. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> two million. Two million dollars. <laughs> well, that's good. All right, let's wrap it up. We had some other stuff to talk about, but we've been going long enough. You guys got things to do, people to see, hey, no dinner worries. to eat. Scotty, you got noodles boiling today? Those? No. No. <laughs> Fresh off the hook. All right. Well, I'll let you guys go. It's been a blast. Thanks for joining me. Scotty, why don't you plug your channel? Yeah, it's Hawks Holocrons on YouTube. Um, earlier this morning, I did some gameplay for Fallen Order because Kenobi is supposed to potentially get into some Inquisitor Tomorrow. stuff. So, yeah. So, uh, I have all of the Charles Soul 2017 Vader comics, and I've been talking about nice. all of the uh, little Inquisitor facts that are sprinkled in those. So, come check me out. I love it. And Steve, are you reading anything good right now? <laughs> <laughs> Who's reading? You're, no, I guess. You're sitting anxiously for Moon Knight. You're waiting patiently, anxiously for Moon Knight to hit the to hit your TV. Actually, yeah, that's that's what I'm most excited for right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah Moon Knight is Moon. Uh, just the first trailer for Moon Knight. Yeah, M- Moon Knight. The first trailer didn't sell me, and now I'm like, I'm all in on Moon Knight. I'm like, let's get let's really? get this going. There are things about the first trailer I didn't like. We won't talk about it today because I don't want to get into that. But uh, I, I'm all in now. There are things that I... Yeah, it seems like it could be a really fun, different show that might appeal to me. And if it's a slow burn, guys, then I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> you like the slow burn. <laughs> I like the slow burns. All right, thanks so much for joining me today. This has been Super Tuesday. Thanks for the, the chat. And uh, give us a like and subscribe. Give it the comments down below. And until next time... May you be the master of your own universe.